Texas. The roof is open, and we've got football from NRG Stadium in Houston. Today we've got an interesting Week 11 matchup on tap between the Denver Broncos and the Houston Texans. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis on hand here. CD, you look at the Texans in this matchup. Their offense is a unit that's not afraid to take chances out there. Stadium in Houston. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. Leading him out, the former Stanford man at quarterback, it's Davis Mills. And remember, when he came out of college, he left early. So a lot of people weren't really paying attention to this young man, but he's entrusted with a leadership role early in his NFL career and didn't shy away from it. His goal, continue to prove that there should have been one more quarterback that went in the first round of the 2021 draft. First play, Mills looking to pass. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards on the gain, a great start for this offense. And you can bet they're going to lean on him quite a bit, obviously. They did last week. It was over 100 yards also. The AFC Player of the Week is announced Wednesday. And until they take that away, I would continue to lean on him, try and have another award for him, one in this game. But when you look back at last week and you saw how he was able to find holes in the defense, but it was also the run after the catch. That's what made it impressive. Holding offense. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Here's Mills. Looking for Shepard deep. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. The Texans at 4-5, and five, a game under 500. And they were winners their last time out, so they'll be looking to make it two in a row. And so much about football, partner, comes down to mindset. Being in the right frame of mind in the best way to get in that good frame of mind, winning. So they come in feeling good. They've got the home crowd behind them. That day they're going to be tough to beat in this one. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back and it can turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And unable to connect, incomplete. Uh, give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Broncos take over, first down and ten. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they'll be led by their 5'11 quarterback and a mobile one at that for Temple. It's P.J. Walker. Now, the meeting we had with him this week, that's one of the briefer ones we've ever had, isn't it? <laughs> he wasn't too happy after last week. Not happy. Really determined to play a whole lot better, and he really can't play a whole lot worse. He's got to go out and show the team that the goods that he exhibited early are still there. Otherwise, he could lose the confidence that they have in him. And hoping to get rid of that interception bar. From the 41, Walker. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Marcus Davenport in there to bury him for a loss of 11. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. They kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist.
looking at Houston defensively, they've got a dime set. Six DBs on third. To throw is Walker. Under pressure, they got him again. Marcus Davenport, two plays in a row now that he has gotten in there for the sack, and it brings up fourth down. Well, make that a second sack here on their first drive out defensively, and have to get ahead of ourselves, but they're, they're on pace for double-digit sacks at this point. But they're going to have to find a way to tamp that down, aren't they? So if you're the play caller, you're telling your quarterback, maybe some screens, maybe some draws, hard count, use your voice inflection a little bit, anything to try and slow that pressure down. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. It's a 46-yard punt, two on the return. And the Texans will take over. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And Pierce gets it again on second down, and he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Consecutive runs of six yards gives him a first and ten. Charles, they won last week despite him not running the ball well. They told us need to get him going. Runs like that help. And they talked to us about leaning on him because, as you noted, last week they didn't have to. Still won the ball game. They leaned on other people to give them the yardage that they needed, but they really want him to be that guy, and that's what they're doing early in this game. First and ten, it's Pierce. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. The defense was ready for the run pass option, diagnosed it perfectly. Not only did they stack him up at the point of attack, but he was met by a host of light-colored jerseys. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. On second down, here's Pierce. And he'll get about three here up to the 44-yard line. On third down, here's Mills. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. So just three yards on the completion there. And that's going to make it fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, when we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. A first down throw for Walker. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. On second and ten, Walker, man open. He's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one going for a gain of 11, and a Bronco first down. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. And they'll run the end around here with Judy. And he stopped immediately there. Now Walker. To the sideline, and it's caught. But boy, he's out of bounds. They try to get him into space, coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. Here's Walker. And that is incomplete. Boy, oh, did everything the whole under. A nice play defensively, and now brings up fourth down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. 
Well, we've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and ten. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. These are his numbers from last week's contest. Four catches, 64 yards. This defense is ranked near the bottom of the league against the pass. You get the sense that he feels like if he gets covered on any call, he's going to be upset. He thinks he should be open on every snap in this game. Mills from the gun on third down. That's complete to Tyler Johnson. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. No score after one on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Oh, trying to fit it into Shepard, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Ronald Darby. And the Broncos are going to take possession of the football. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different colored jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. They'll have very good starting field position here after the turnover as they search for the first points of the ball game. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Now Walker. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Texans scoop it. Does the big boy have the juice? The 20. And they will bring this one back. A fumble return for a Texans touchdown. The big boy earning his lunch. That's what you call rumbling with the ball, Charles. Big man with football. He wasn't just earning lunch, Brandon. He was earning dinner. He was <laughs> midnight snack. <laughs> Everything that you could possibly do, he did it on that play to pick up the ball and go. Ryan suck up on for the point after. And the Texans take a 7 nothing lead. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And this will come out to the 25 as Hamler elects not to return it. Set to take over, the Broncos offense trots back out. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Walker now. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. First down, never. the draw here's Williams and good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down what makes a draw play like that successful well we did see where he made the first wave miss and that was a big part of it but a lot of it is just being actors back there making the defense think it's going to be a pass this offense finding its legs now here's another first and ten and movement by one of the Broncos up front, and in comes the flag. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. To throw is Walker. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Well, fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. They'll run out of the gun here. Williams. They find some open field here. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 
41 yards rushing for him now in his first two carries of the ball game. Well, that is a running back who is not about to go down easily. He fought his way through the contact until the seas opened up for him. And as a former defender, I can tell you with certainty, those are the ones that have you losing sleep at night. I would not like to be in that film room on Tuesday going over that one. Just a pretty poor effort defensively, and it leads to a big play. On first and ten, Walker working the middle here. That's complete to Moreau, the tight end. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he's going to have the hook up to Sutton. He's down inside the 10 to the 8. And it comes on a gain of 8. They go back to the ground with Williams. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first. Oh, really make him upset, and right now, there's no way he's letting a coach take him out of the game. He's going to want the ball again, so he actually does get into the end zone, hopefully on his next carry. Walker. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Foster Moreau, his second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos are an extra point away from evening this one up. First and goal, forget running the football, forget establishing anything. Just put it in the end zone with the pass for a touchdown. Oh, yeah, I guess that's the definition of catching the defense off guard there. They weren't expecting that. And that totally goes against type, doesn't it? When you think first and goal from the one, you're thinking running play. Extra point from McManus is good. And we are tied at seven. So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded right around the eight. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. They had the interception last drive, led to the tying touchdown. So 7-7 the score as they begin first and 10. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Pierce now up the middle. And he'll earn a couple of tough yards past the 30 to the 31. The Texans on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Mills can't get away, and down he goes. Randy Gregory. He's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. And every game we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them, and they get their first sack of the contest. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. And he uncorks a beauty, best of the day. Hamler now on the return. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And that will come the offense as they take over. Denver's offense now set to go. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. 
find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Houston set to take over. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. The tackle made by the linebacker, Joe Schobert. On second and seven, Mills. Finding Sterling Shepard for his first catch. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag. Because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. So the 14 yards actually takes him from 143 to the other for first and 10. A first down throw for Mills. He finds his man, Johnson. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. He had that little extra pace that he had on the pass. That was quite a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. He's going to fire this thing deep right sideline. And incomplete on the deep ball. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Looking to throw his mills. Quick completion here to Johnson. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Well, the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Throwing, Mills. Touchdown, Texans! Tyler Johnson, his first touchdown on the year. And the Texans will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front and now see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Extra point up and good by Sucker, and that makes the score 14-7. to seven. So the drive there took six plays, and the result, a Houston touchdown. Out is the Texans kick team as they'll send this one away. And this will come out to the 25 as Hamler elects not to return it. The Broncos going to go on offense now late in this first half. And with just under a minute to go, they might try to think about mounting a drive here if they can and get in the end zone to potentially tie this game up. First down, Walker. He completes this to Sutton. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. As the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go, Williams loses the football, and the Texans scoop it. And some room to work. And they will bring this one back. A fumble return for a Texans touchdown. So that is now two fumble return touchdowns. And you're talking about something that's going to drive a head coach crazy. Without a doubt. But for the defensive guys, once you do it once, you create a frenzy. Everybody wants to get involved, and they got it done a second time. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. 
Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Walker from the gun on third down. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Isaiah Oliver for the INT. And the Texans are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. They're trying to resurrect his confidence. Last week was a disaster. Five interceptions in that loss, and another pick there. I played with a quarterback like this before, and he had a tough game. And the head coach said, I'll take him. I'll fix him. The very next game, he started out the exact same way. The head coach turned to the offense coordinator and said, he's yours from now on. <laughs> Someone has to take responsibility and work with him and try and get him settled. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Now Mills. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. To throw once more on second and 10. Mills. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Randy Gregory. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. From the six. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Here comes the Broncos' offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. But, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And that's off the mark, incomplete. And Charles, you, you wonder about this defense coming in. I mean, look, it's no secret they're playing a team that's down on its luck right now. Losers of five straight. How does that change how you prepare for a game? Well, to me, the first thought is you just get after them early, right? Take away any chance of them building any confidence. And the second thing is you prepare a little bit differently. You've got to expect this team to take chances, go for it on third and fourth downs, run a lot of trick plays, anything to try and break their losing streak. So you must stay alert and stay aware. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And that will hit and continue on out of bounds. Talk about angling that one perfectly, partner. We know the ball can bounce anywhere, especially how it's shaped. But that one, as if on cue, goes out of bounds perfectly. Perfect indeed, right at the one-yard line. Excellent coffin corner punt. 
They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. On the ground, it's Pierce to begin the drive. And he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven-yard line. Third and short yardage, Mills. Johnson with a completion over the middle. He's got room past the 30. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A gain of right around 35 yards on a play that started back inside their 10. Well, fair to say that when you're looking at guys that can run like the wind, you often find him at the wide receiver position, and that was special there. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards So just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And if you're looking for proof of his speed, Next Gen stat shows that he was traveling just over 21 miles an hour there. Throwing again on second and 10. Mills to Pierce. They set up the screen. And they're going to get this up to midfield. Holding offense. Now after the holding call, here's second and 20. Here's Mills. Throw left side complete. That's Johnson. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep and curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. And they'll throw again. Here's Mills. Out to the right here to Shepard. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 40. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Well, they obviously read man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. by that? Bro? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Bobby thought he was going to take it upfield, and then it curls back inside for the completion. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory, right at the 40. Running it out of the gun with Pierce. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. From the 39, Mills. A quick pass here. He's got Shepard. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 24-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. First down, Mills. Over the middle complete, it's Pierce. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. Back to the ground with Pierce. Down inside the 10. And they work this near the 5. He'll be stopped at the 6. It's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Mills to throw it. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Third and goal, Mills. And it's caught. 
They're able to hold him to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Now Ryan Suckup will come on and try the field goal. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. Suckup's kick is good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to seven. So the lead grows here incrementally, but I think the way their defense is playing, you feel okay with just getting through. They've definitely been stout so far, but now that could all change because if one guy gets loose for 70 yards, this is a different game. But as it stands, field goals are good. Just keep adding to that lead. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. And really, Charles, not much of a surprise that they're losing. They just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game. And as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. Exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, they've got to find some type of a play, multiple plays, that puts the ball in the air and allows for them to have some success. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Here's Walker. Gets around him. This will be caught. Judy. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. A huge play there for Denver, 48 yards. And boy, CD, it's one thing to watch a great run, but when it's a great run with broken contact, it's like a cherry on top. That was a nice play. Yeah, and that's a run born out of ferociousness. He took on that initial contact and in his mind just screamed, out of my way, and kept right on going and wound up turning it into a big play. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now a tenth carry. Here's Williams. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. Third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. It's caught on the right side. Williams. They call it a loss of a yard there. And it'll be fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here from the right hash, and this one just a chipping. The kick by McManus is good. And they're back with it a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and ten. They'll start this drive out on the ground, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. 
Two yards, the loss, second and 12. And they have just not been able to block him at all throughout this game. Seems like every other play, he's doing something in the backfield. Already got two sacks, and now here's a tackle behind the line. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Mills. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. So now after the sack, Mills and the Texans needing to navigate a third and long. On third down, here's Pierce. And they'll mark him down right around the nine, just shy of the ten. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back, tell him to take care of the ball, and try to move forward. A well-hit ball there. 50 yards on the punt, three on the return. And they will take over first and 10. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. 107 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. And Walker now to throw on first down. Got his man, it's Dulcich. He's got room at the 30. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. To throw is Walker. Escaping the... And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Chris Wormley able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. But many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Now Walker. Open man, he completes it to Judy. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. Oh, that's going to be a costly one. It's intercepted. Isaiah Oliver with the INT. And the Texans have just about sewn up this football game. Charles, whatever's going on between his ears right now, it's just not completely calculated correctly. Seven picks between last week and this week after that one. And they always say the most important part of a player is those six inches between the ears. But right now, it's all those interceptions that are going on. So whoever his trusted confidant is on the sidelines, I don't know if it's the offense coordinator, quarterback's coach, maybe the backup quarterback, that's who he needs to get with now and get himself calm. 
They'll start on the ground here on first down. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And Pierce gets it again on second down. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Going for it with Pierce. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. It's a 48-yard punt with the coverage holding him to three on the return. And it will be first and ten as they take over. So the Broncos now down by seven, 90 seconds remaining. Now they're losing streak in danger of continuing as they come up on first down. And that's caught by Williams. Only able to gain a couple there, and that's going to bring up second down. Walker's throw taken in here by Patrick. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. Well, they got the yardage they needed there, picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as the understanding where they are on the field? From the 32 now, here's first and 10. to throw and oh that one nearly intercepted that would have sealed it instead it'll be second down he'll look to throw incomplete back to back incompletions but we know this is definitely fourth down territory time not on their side they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. And this one is incomplete. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. He's back to throw. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Back to throw. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. Fourth down, Walker. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Down to a knee here as the Texans look to let the clock roll. What a ball game this was. What an atmosphere this was. And the home team getting the late touchdown, getting the victory, and now everybody in this building can find a way with smiles on their faces. And what do real estate people tell us all the time?